So, a, a lot of airplanes in that forecast, and a lot of airplanes out there in the global market today. So, what, why not more airplanes in India? Why is Bombardier and why is the Q400 not more widely recognized and known in India? Well, India is a developing market, and just like like all developing markets, uh, the industry tends to go after the low hanging fruit first. Uh, sorry if that's an American uh, an American saying. But what I mean is, is the first the first points that get connected in a, in a growing aviation network, it's the Mumbai's and the Delhi's and the Bangalore's and the Hyderabad's, and it, that's the that's the easy void to fill as commercial aviation develops. Once those points all get connected, that's when the opportunity really opens itself to start connecting second tier and third tier cities either to each other or to those major cities and developing truly uh, you know spanning air aircraft and uh, airline networks. And this is from CAPA, a recently published uh, forecast from CAPA, and it really shows that India is just now at a turning point. So if you look back in 2008, 2010, how many of, of, of services developing and, and, and going on in India were between primary markets? Again, these Bangalore's, Mumbai's, Delhi's, Hyderabad's, the big cities, and how many were these second, second tier markets and, and third tier markets? And you know, 70 to 80 percent of the air service historically has just really been connecting these big markets. It's going forward, if you look at the forecast 2013, 2016, now the opportunities for airlines and passengers, and, and, and uh, by consequence the, the OEMs and manufacturers, now it's moving into the smaller aircraft. The aircraft that the Bombardier product line is really optimized for, uh, to, to help airlines take advantage of in the region. So there are actually 412 uh, Q400s that have been ordered worldwide. And 350, 357 of those were in service uh, as of April 30th, which is the last time we formally announced, uh, you know, disclosed our, our financial information with more than 30 operators. There's the one we're here to, to talk about today, SpiceJet, the first operator of the Q400 in India. So what I want to do today, again, given maybe the lack of exposure you've had historically to Bombardier and the Q400 in particular, I want to make sure you understand how the Q400 is different than what people traditionally think of as a turboprop. Uh, a lot of the negatives that, that passengers and, and, and uh, other customers and, and airlines have about turboprops don't come into play with the Q400. So I want to make sure you understand that this isn't just another turboprop you're going to go out and see and, and be, be participating in the delivery ceremony later this morning. Uh, this is really a game changer. So well, the Q400 has all the traditional turboprop features. It has the performance to get in a short airfield and, uh, you know, the, the performance capabilities that require a turboprop. Very fuel efficient, very environmentally friendly, and very good economics. In fact, the best economics of any regional aircraft that's out there operating today. What makes the Q400 unique, it's the jet features. High speed, fast climb, long range, high technology, and a quiet and comfortable cabin for, for the passengers. So I'll walk through these kind of one at a time and give you a little bit more detail to help you, help you put some of these in perspective and how the Q400 is different than what you may have experienced uh, with traditional triple problems. So you look at the, the, the speed of the Q400. So the cruise speed of uh, the Q400 is a little over 350 knots. So compare that to a traditional turbo prop, uh, an ATR-72, the, uh, the cruise speed, that's about 270 knots. So the Q400 cruises 80 knots faster than the ATR. And I'll show you another slide that maybe helps you put that into perspective coming, coming up right after this. It also climbs much quicker than traditional triple props. It, it climbs on the same type of profile that you expect out of a small jet aircraft. So what does that mean? It means you're able to get to altitude quicker and get preferential ATC treatment, preferential air traffic control treatment. It means you can get over weather. It means you can, uh, you can uh, perform uh, in, in challenging regions. You have a better, uh, a higher single engine cruise. Again, going over mountains, uh, you get more direct routings, and it also has uh, the capability of, of traditional turboprops, rough airfields, short airfields, what, what have you. So you get the best of both worlds with the Q400. It, there's no other aircraft uh, available data that offers you that portfolio. Sorry, there we go. So, so what does the cruise speed of the Q400 mean? So if we look at a 300 nautical mile flight, so uh, that's about, what, 550 kilometers, kind yeah. of, to, to put that in perspective? Mind the hydropower. Yeah, so I'm American. Converting to kilometers always, always <laughs> takes me a little bit of time. Uh, 
So a 737-800 with flight and, and taxi time will do that in about 54 minutes. A traditional turboprop like the ATR will take 73 minutes to do that flight. 20 minutes longer than a jet to fly that same mission with an ATR than with a Q400. Or I'm sorry, than with a jet. The Q400, only about five minutes longer than, than a jet. So you're offering the same flight profile uh, in, terms of, in terms of time from point A to point B on uh, the majority of missions where, where, where uh, flights are flown in the world with a very small time benefit. So what, is, what does that speed efficiency mean? Well, to the operator, it means you can do a lot more flying with fewer airplanes compared to a traditional triple prop. It also means you can do a lot more flying with fewer pilots in terms of the number of miles you cover per pilot. Uh, so in a developing market where uh, you know, the stream of pilots coming in sometimes doesn't keep up with the stream of demand, uh, it's a very efficient way to meet that demand with, with, with fewer uh, resources available. And of course, it also is a very good value proposition to the customer, right? I'm a passenger just like, like everybody, and I'd rather get from point A to point B 20 minutes faster given the choice. Uh, again, just, just the client profile to put it in perspective. So from, from sea level to 25,000 feet, uh, T400 gets there in a little under 15 minutes. Think of a, of a, of a traditional turboprop, uh, again, the ATR-72 is a, a reference you're probably familiar with in the Indian market. 30 minutes and you're not, you're not even at, uh, at 25,000 feet. In India in particular, one of the unique features of, of the Q400, uh, it actually gets treated like a jet for, for approach. So what that means is you get near the airports and, and traffic congestion builds up. It's easier for air traffic control to slot in that turboprop just like it's a jet coming in. It's going to get caught holding, letting other aircraft in, a lot less than a traditional turboprop in. It, th this, is a, this is a very powerful attribute to the airplane uh, from, from India. So not only will you get from departure to the arrival area of the airport quicker, you'll spend less time waiting for your slot actually to get in and, and land on the runway. So IKO actually treats the Q400 as a code C? Yes. Not a code B? Correct. Wow. Uh, just to put it in perspective, and I've only heard this anecdotally, so we have a, a big operator in the, uh, the northwest of the U.S. with Horizon, uh, Alaska. And when they first started taking delivery of the Q400s and operating, there's a, there's a rule that under 10,000 feet, uh, a jet has to fly under 250 knots. And uh, air traffic control kept yelling at the Q400 pilot saying, slow down, you're exceeding 200 knots. And they said, we're a turboprop. <laughs> <laughs> the jet and they're like, no, a turboprop can't do that. No, we're a turboprop. We, you know, so uh, again, it's not what you think of as a, as a traditional turboprop. Nice cabin. You're gonna, you're gonna, I don't know if you'll get a chance to get on the airplane today, but you'll certainly get a chance to get on the airplane once it goes in service with SpiceJet. A, a nice